Oh. Classic. He's blessing her. He got all my memories. See, that, that happens to me when I, uh, I I eat ice cream too fast. I get all the my memories from from the third Same. grade start rushing back into my brain. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. what happens to me when I put my fork in a socket. <laughs> Oh my God. Why would you do that? <laughs> because White Vision told me to. You know Look what? at him. He's a crazy person. Yes, he's got sword programming. I can I can totally see Hayward installing that. Put your put your fork in a socket. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> For extra Jeez, power. And then he busts through the window. Who's gonna clean up the glass? Who's gonna clean up all of this? All right. Exactly. Oh my gosh, this is insane. Welcome back to New Rockstars. You gave us your hottest unanswered MCU questions. And we said, hot dog. What a hot great dog. question. So today, <laughs> hot dog, hot dog, <laughs> hot diggity dog. What a good question. So today, MT and I will not only answer those questions, but theorize where they can go. We'll mm. be focusing on where the hell White Vision is after jumping through that, uh, that Seriously, ceiling. Seriously, where'd he go? <laughs> he said, deuces. Uh, we're going to talk about Moon Knight because you guys have asked a lot about Moon Knight. You've asked a lot about Valentina and her mission to kill Clint Barton and Hawkeye. Mm. And we're also going to dabble in the Celestials and the Eternals because you guys had questions about those too. Yes. We're going to get really into this. Yes. We got a lot of questions to answer. Yes. Hey, hey. And I bet you're wondering, where is Eric Voss? He's on vacation. So me and MT, <laughs> while the cat's away, yes. the dogs play. We are know. here. Hey, hey. We are here. <laughs> oh, and introductions. You guys, this is Inside Marvel, New Rockstar's <laughs> weekly Marvel reaction show. And we want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring our show today. More on them in a little bit later. But first, yes. MT. Welcome yourself. Introduce Hello, yourself. what's going on, Jessica? <laughs> I'm so excited to get into these topics with you today. We do miss Eric. Eric is not with us today. He's gonna be out for a couple of weeks, but um, we we do we we do feel his spirit with us today, as as I do all the time, um, especially during Christmas season. I hope your Christmas was good, everybody, and you too, Jessica. I hope everyone felt the Christmas spirit. Oh, I felt the Christmas you. Eric Voss spirit. He's the the ghost of Christmas present for me. Um, is Eric Voss. Guess which ghost he is. He's the grumpy one. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's oh. the one that teaches me how to have more Christmas cheer, which is all of them. Oh. <laughs> and off that note, <laughs> and, off that, <laughs> and off that note, you guys, you asked, where is White Vision or where did White Vision go? So White Vision was designed uh, to beat Wanda in the hex. And during the standoff, he faced our WandaVision. Uh, and also it took until now for me to realize it's WandaVision because that vision is a Wanda version of vision. So it's WandaVision. Mm, Either way, yes. I, I, it took me too long to recognize that. <laughs> There's so many layers with the title of WandaVision. It's like, hey, it's like television and WandaVision, but it's also Wanda slash vision. But it's, it's also the Wanda version of vision. So many different they, ways you could interpret it. The, genuinely, though, good job, writers. You Great so way to good. introduce it all to Disney+. Plus. I loved it. <laughs> so this is when WandaVision touches White Vision's forehead, gets him all his powers. Vision goes, oh, I am Vision, and she jumps through the ceiling. So personally, at, we don't know where it is. There's nothing that has been uh, confirmed by Marvel Studios or about any other shows really about where White Vision could possibly be. But being a robot that was kind of sentient, he was built to destroy Wanda and the Hex, but now he is a free and sentient. You'd probably do like exactly what a free sentient robot would do and try acquiring all information on all globes and any scale, right? That's how I assume would happen. Uh, he's forever curi curious and forever just endlessly walking this plane, trying to find answers to not only who he is, but to the world itself. How do you feel about that? No, no, for sure. Like a vision is a, a person that is, or the being that is like, like you said, highly curious. And, but he's also, he's a living computer. And like, uh, he, yeah. and we, we learned from Ultron, um, his father, essentially, that um, Ultron uh, from the jump started downloading everything on the internet. It's like, I have to know what this world is about so I can figure out how to best to defend it. Yeah. And I feel like vision in his own way, hasn't really gotten to experience the world yet. Like he's always been yes. either like somebody else's property, either Ultron's or um, the Avengers or whatever. So like now he has his own being for the first time in his life, he's going to try to probably experience the world. And I think that that's what Vision Quest, um, the title of his show is sort of yes. implying. It's like, let's go on a, on a journey to discover who I am and like go on a quest throughout the world 
to try to figure that out. So very, I'm so excited for Vision Quest. I'm excited to see where he's going to go. And I think that what I, what I said is the actual question, not more so where is White Vision? It's where will we see him next? Where does he go next? So it's like, where do we assume he's going to show up in the cinematic universe next? Uh, now, yeah. th- and keep in mind what we know now, like with even Valentina being in charge of the CIA, creating a Thunderbolts team, uh, we have Armor Wars. Where do we think we'll see White Vision next? I, I definitely feel like Armor Wars is um, the most likely to be like where we'll see at least a cameo because like by extension of Ultron, Vision is himself a piece of Stark technology. Um, so he is probably going to be, and like we, we saw from, from WandaVision that he's a highly sought after weapon because like sword made him sword tried everything to turn him back on after um, his destruction and when they finally did they lost him so like i feel like that um of getting vision back is going to be a huge part of vision quest uh, but also just a huge part of the mcu moving forward um that we could potentially see in, in armor wars as well um but there is also potential that we could see him in ironheart um the uh the, oh. the ironheart series oh. in um, chicago in Chicago, because like you know, we who knows like Vision can be anywhere. You can fly about anywhere, and that's um, true. You know, Riri is very much invested in trying to you know just follow in Tony Stark's footsteps in her own way, and like maybe something, maybe she hacks into something, or like I don't know, like she did, Vision needs Riri's help because she's the the most knowledgeable of Stark technology in the world now. Um, now oh that Tony God. Stark is gone, but like, what do you think? What, what, where do you think that we're gonna see I, my Vision next? I like that. And what I like about that is I like that um, what we had in the Ironheart comics was a lot of her really closely working with even like a hologram version of Mm. uh, Tony Stark. But in reality now in this, in our new MCU, she's working with White Vision to make her (laughs) make her equipment more advanced. That would be sick. I genuinely think he's going to run into the Eternals and the stars. I think he is. I think he is chasing everything and everything and nothing. Uh, Mm. I think he checked out the ship of Theseus (laughs) and I think he also is just in the stars. I think he's going to run into uh, Harry Styles. I think he's going to run into the ship with the rest of them on there. And then he's either going to like try to work with them and be like, who are you guys? Because he's going to be like, you're not humans, but you're also not me. (laughs) You're also not a robot person. Right. I would love to see Vision interact with the Eternals, but I would also love to see him interact with Adam Warlock uh, from Guardians 3. Because like they're sort of very similar in a way. Um, and like, they both have like gems on their foreheads and, and like, and they could be brothers, that aren't, yeah. um, a little cousin. What if they, no, you don't think he's going to show up in guardians. Uh, it would be a crazy cameo. I don't think that he, I, I think it's very unlikely that he flew off into space and like in a very, uh, age of Ultron type way, like Hulk. I think that he's probably on earth. Um, maybe like he's, maybe he's like going through the ruins of uh, Wonder Gore looking for Wanda now that um, he's, you know, more himself. Um, or yeah. I, I feel like there's a good chance that he possibly could have went to Korea to go see his original creator. His, like, a lot of people don't remember that the actual creator of Vision is not Tony Stark. It's not uh, Bruce Banner. It's not even Ultron. It is Helen Cho. Helen Cho created oh, yes, Vision. Yes. And she yes, is still alive. Yes. And she is still mm-hmm. a fact, a huge factor in the MCU, given oh that Amadeus God. Cho is um a hero and a, is a Hulk um in the MCU. And like now that we have Scar yeah. in uh from She Hulk um on the on the board, I feel like we're gonna see more Hulks introduced in the MCU with the Amadeus Cho. And I feel like Vision Quest or whatever the next main vision title will probably introduce reintroduce Helen back to the MCU. And uh, to introduce uh, Amadeus Cho, but also to just like sort of help Vision understand who he is. Because like, if I'm lost and I don't know who I am, I'm going to go talk to my mama. Be like, mama, what's the world about? I don't know nothing about the world. Tell me about the world, mama. mama. Also, you have a smart son. Are we brothers? I, I guess I'm all- <laughs> Amadeus Cho's <laughs> little or big brother. I don't know when he was born. Um, oh, my God. That's so interesting. Funny. That's a good one. I think there was a um, the internet was taken by storm when there when Paul Bettany made a little a little hint as Paul <laughs> Bettany does that he might appear in Multiverse of Madness and Ooh. a lot of people were asking where was White Vision during Multiverse of Madness and mm. also Spider Man No Way Home when everybody kind of things shifted not only in time but in like magic mm. and do you think those things affected White Vision or do you think White Vision wasn't affected by those things because he went into the hex completely fine like. 
when um once I guess it I I guess once Monica Rambo went through the heck, she was affected. But that's oh, yeah. because she was human, right? Mm-hmm. It, or it, that essentially what we know of so far. Right. But when uh, White Vision goes through the hex and he's fighting everybody, he's still the same. He's just a violent sword created machine, or not sword? Uh, no, it was sword created machine. But so it's like, was is he not affected by magic? And is he not affected by like any kind of time disruptions? Well, actually, I feel like. Um, well, first of all, I, he is definitely affected by magic in the sense that like. In order for him to have turned on in WandaVision, they had to use chaos That's magic true. to turn yes. him on. Right. But other than that, I don't think that, you know, him being a vibranium um, synthesoid, a lot of, he can absorb a lot of energy and a lot of like magic energy as well. However, I feel like there is a chance here because he was turned on by chaos magic that Vision himself could be susceptible to um, demonic influence. Not to sound like my Haitian mom, my overly religious Haitian mom. <laughs> But I feel like there is a huge chance that, like, much like Wenwu was influenced uh, by the Dweller in Darkness, that maybe Vision could be receiving, um, like, maybe demonic signals from other people, which could be bad. uh, Because I feel like White Vision looks a lot like the Marvel cosmic deity Despair, who's like a white, Mm -hmm. weird demon man. So it'd be really cool if Vision turned into Despair or something because he was influenced. That'd be kind of crazy. That would be insane. That would be <laughs> nuts. Just... And oh my God. Okay, so save that. Save yes. that for a theory video because that's a great <laughs> idea. You guys, we there's some more questions that we want to yes. get to. But first, be sure to check out NewRockStarsMerch.com where you can grab all of the new Rockstars merch you didn't get for Christmas. And I know there's some that you guys missed. And there's still time to grab our latest Obsession shirt inspired by Black Panther, which I am not currently wearing. But <laughs> are you wearing it? Two black people on the show. We we <laughs> rapping T'Challa. How no. dare us? We 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 yeah. let we let them down. We let them down. <laughs> I'm not wearing mine right now, but you know why? So you can go look it up yourself and then exactly. go buy it because it's amazing. It's, mine's in the wash because I've been wearing it so much. See, there you go. Uh, take it from us. You got to get it before <laughs> the film premieres on Disney Plus, which is soon. It's next month. Support the channel and check out all of our awesome merch options over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. All right. Our second question for today is, Jessica, will we get a Moon Knight season two? No. <laughs> no, they decided that Moon Knight no. was so Quit lame asking. that they'll never revisit him again. Yeah, essentially, no. Here's why I'm saying no. And okay. I'm so sorry to be bursting everyone's battle. I'm coming with facts on this okay. one. So Moon Knight clearly was a hit for all of us. It was a hit for critics. Everybody loved it. I loved it. We left off being introduced, introduced to Jake Lockley, the third altar, still paired and working with Khonshu. And after meeting Terret and seeing her avatar become Layla, there's just like a million things we absolutely could visit in season two, you guys. And Oscar Isaac teased a ton of different times, which he shouldn't have done, but he did. He teased different times with the director in Egypt, uh, a little bit of info during New York City, like uh, sci-fi con, I think. But uh, Marvel actually has never given an official statement to any of these things. And then on top of that, it's little things like them winning an Emmy under limited series because right. they're a limited series. And they've been mentioning how they're not really talking. Like Kevin Feige hasn't brought it up, but it is still, in fact, a limited series. They said they're, uh, that Moon Knight, the character, can inhabit it, inhabit any corner of the MCU, which is true. I think he's great in any. You could throw him in anything and he's great. But I just think this was his origin or not origin, but our like introduction to him, so he right. can go to other things. Kind of how like Miss Marvel is our introduction, so now she's going to the Marvels. Right. We're, like, but this doesn't mean that we're not going to get like a spinoff. I don't. I think. I think Midnight Suns is on its way. I well, yeah, stand sure. by it. Yeah, there, there's there's no way that we're not getting a Midnight Suns project. I feel like it's getting yeah. teased because like we're in this new darker phase of the MCU, and like now that um with especially with Werewolf by Night introducing like you know the the bloodstone which is a chaos element and um you know these more darker players like um like your werewolf by nights and your your man things yeah they're 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 definitely meaning to bring about all these dark Mm -hmm. side heroes to assemble of midnight suns so that's definitely happening as for moon knight season two those are some really good points um especially the emmy points um that they, they it was under limited series however i do feel like however they are going to do a season two eventually. I think that season two, mm-hmm. there's just too many threads that were left behind, like yeah. that were very personal to Mark, but like Jake Lockley 
in his inner struggle. Like we know from um, when he went to the uh, the afterlife that he and Mark didn't exactly finish. Like they didn't exactly resolve mm. their um, their balance on their inner balance. And I think that that's what Jake Lockley in season two of Moon Knight's going to do. Yeah. Um, well, and also Bushman. Like we they tease Bushman and yeah. they didn't really um, go into that, which is like they're yeah. definitely one hundred percent gonna get into that as well. Um, so yeah, but like, like you said, they don't necessarily have to do that. Cause like the Marvel cinematic universe is so big that we can easily see the Moon Knight story continued in, um, in a uh, Midnight yeah. Suns and like as part of that narrative, that'd be really dope to see as well. Yeah. But like, I just feel like it'd be really cool to see like an, another Moon Knight installation. What firstly, also, this is just for you guys watching. When I say no, I would love a Moon Knight season two. I love oh, yeah. Moon Knight. I'm just thinking practically especially that no one's really talking about it it's kind of like she hulk left a lot of unanswered questions too and so did miss marvel and so did this and that's on the writers and the showrunners more than it is on kevin feige so they're leaving it open so they can get the opportunity to get a season two because they would love to do it again why wouldn't you want to do it again you guys have a great writer's room you want your project to go further but that is on the Feigster and everybody the else. Feigster. The Feigster. <laughs> the Feig man. That's on, uh, that's on Daddy Feige. Father um, Feige. But it, again, though, it is, I think the opening is still there. And I think because we're getting into gods, we have our like Egyptian god right here. And then we're getting into, uh, not metaphysical, but like uh, kind of uh, uh, like just the scary stuff. I think we have an opportunity to see Moon uh, Moon Knight literally everywhere, and they can finish a lot of those stories. I think it's just the story of like Ethan Hawke's character and being the Avatar. Like I don't know how that's going to be answered in other properties. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel I feel like Ethan Hawke is done with the MCU. I feel like he had that that's one. That's what season I thought, and he's done, and he should be. But if you kill, I think this was a question that was brought up, and I, I it might have been answered. But when you kill him, doesn't that release his god? And they shot him at the end. Hmm. I think the implication was that, like, Akanchu wanted to get rid of the god as well, like both of them, because, like, they tied the soul to the god. They, they tied the god's soul being to uh, Arthur Harrow's physical form. So I think Kanchu was like, all right, we're going to get rid of you for real, for real now, um, because you're a threat. So I don't know. Um, but they can go either oh, way yeah. with that, really. See? Things you can do in <laughs> season two. Just give them a season two. Just give yes. them a season two. It's Just not like it. I'm sure there's been other Emmy shows that were nominated for limited series and then was like, huh. Well, now we're gonna make a second season. Right. <laughs> like, now no, we're gonna like, do it. Money gotta be made. Like, come on, make a season two. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. I'd love it. Oh, you guys, that was that was just to answer your second question. Uh, we want to thank the folks that help bring Inside Marvel to you. And first, we especially want to thank NordVPN. We watch a lot of movies and series here at New Rockstars, and one thing that makes it easier is NordVPN. With NordVPN, you can change your virtual location with just one click, which makes it easier to find streaming platforms at a lower price. And we can even access platforms that aren't available in the US. With just one click, you can choose from over 5,400 servers in over 60 countries. That way, we never miss out on our favorite content, whether we're at home or traveling. And if you're worried that NordVPN might cause buffering when you're watching content, fear not. NordVPN provides amazing speed thanks to Nord Links, so you can stream securely without bandwidth throttling. NordVPN's benefits and features go way beyond improving your streaming experience. You can also access games and discounts only available in other regions and block malware-ridden websites while you explore securely. We encourage you to try NordVPN for yourself. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash marvel to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan, plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash marvel for an exclusive discount plus four months for free. If you had just downloaded all of your memories into a robotic copy of yourself, you would probably want a good night's sleep. I know I would. And here at New Rockstars, we trust Helix to protect our sleep with the best mattresses in the world. Me and MT both have Helix mattresses and we love them. I, yeah, I sleep so well. Now, I had a bad bed. I had a bad bed for like 12 years and then I got a Helix mattress and now I Same. sleep like a baby. 
Same. It is so good. It's, it's like the difference is like night and day. It feels so nice. Helix Sleep has a quiz that just takes two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you, which is extremely important. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have a soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. <laughs> mattress is great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers like myself. Uh, you guys, I can't get enough of this Helix mattress. I I love it so much. I have to fight my cat for it all the time. <laughs> Just go to helixsleep.com slash inside marble. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. It's super quick, you guys. You can do this. And they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. I promise, guaranteed. They have 10-year warranty, you guys. A 10-year warranty, a decade. And you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash inside marvel so go check it out right now it's in the description too okay mt why did valentina hire yelena to kill clint you were the one that i talked to about this because you brought it up to me that it wasn't valentina that was hired yes um it was uh, Ele uh eleanor bishop um if i'm not yes. mis mis misremembering that uh that needed to that needed hawkeye handled so she contacted uh miss valentina and valentina is the one who 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 set everything up. So yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm, what, I'm wondering what's going on there. Yeah, it's and it's also, yeah. so the question that keeps getting asked everywhere is just like, now that we know that it's Eleanor that actually hired Valentina to hire, uh, the, uh, now that we know that it's Eleanor that hired Valentina to get Yelena to kill Clint, it's more, it's like also, okay, so what's Eleanor's motive? And she's working with Kingpin. And right. then we know that everybody is out for Clint because of the whole Ronin situation. But Valentina is now head of the CIA. Was she head of the CIA during this? And is she, is this like, <laughs> sorry, there's a lot of questions. So is she head of the CIA during this? But then is she also wrapping up the Thunderbolts? Is that why she hired Yelena? Hmm. I feel like what we're seeing with Val is Val's, Val's essentially doing what Norman Osborn did during the Dark Rain run. And Val is, yeah. is basically trying to infiltrate her way in um, world governments, well, so right now American governments, and uh, well, oh. also the criminal underworld, so that she can control everything. And right now, with, uh, with Wakanda Forever, we, we, we're seeing her basically erect herself to becoming the head of the CIA by, you know, basically selling out um, Mr... Um, friend of Wakanda, I forget his name. Why am I blanking on his name? Everett Ross. Everett Ross, yes, Everett Ross. So I feel like um, by the end, or eventually, we're going to see um, Valentina essentially just being like, hey, criminal underworld, I can help you get away with stuff because now I'm the head of like the CIA and like everyone trusts me. So like, you know, Kingpin, you can do this. And like the hood, you can do this. Is basically assembling like all the major players um, and have a control of the world um, on the low. I, A, I love the idea that we're getting a piece of that in Hawkeye. Or, well, technically the end of Black Widow. It was like, here's her at work. This is what she's probably going to be doing with the Thunderbolts. Here's her at work right now. Mm -hmm. Secondly, she, you think she's pulling in Amanda Waller? And, like, forming her own, like, just, that's what she's doing on the low low? I, I, I feel like her CIA position is eventually going to give her the authority to mm -hmm. assemble... A, an Avengers like team with the Thunderbolts. Um, and I feel like it's just, I feel like there's a, there's a weird sense of fear coming to the MCU, to the people, to the normal people of the MCU with all these mutants and all this stuff coming up. And they'll, they'll look to um, Contessa Valentina to, for, for guidance. And she's going to be like, all right, we need a new Avengers team. So I'm going to make the Thunderbolts, but they're secretly going to be working for my secret agenda because I'm working with all the criminals. Yeah. And so like, Yelena, who's thinking that she's gonna, you know, finally be on a good team, just like her sister, is like, you know what, I'm gonna, if my sister can can change her ways, I can too. And it's like, oh no, I'm working for a bad person too. Whoops. <laughs> like sister, oh, like no, sister. Not again. <laughs> well, the interesting part is like Valentina choosing Yelena. She could have chose anyone, but I think right. it's easier to get someone like Yelena, get someone that already has a motive, and you have to create that motive. Right. So I think um, Valentina hiring Yelena was just out of like coincidence of like, oh, well, this person has the most reason to kill Clint once she finds out, once right. I tell her the truth. 
Like, so it's like, I, and we need to remember how smart Valentina is. She's sneaky. She's conniving. She can do all these things so much quicker than anyone else can. So right. she's already like 12 steps ahead when we see her. So in Black Widow, what we saw her hiring Yelena, she's actually 12 steps ahead. So she's probably right. got everybody under her belt right now. No, I, I feel like the reason why, like, that was a really good point. Because like what she essentially did at the end of Black Widow was like, hey, I'm here to help you by you helping yeah. me. It's like, you want to kill yep. this guy because he, he basically killed your sister. So like, you know what? Yeah. Let's continue our working relationship because I'm a nice person. You killed this yeah. person and then we'll talk about maybe a Thunderbolt hit. I don't know. But yeah, we're, 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 we're besties, yeah. basically. Well, <laughs> it was also, it wasn't, he- okay, so there's also this piece, w- this piece that wasn't helpful that was like her friend that was once a Black Widow telling right. her, Oh, after you're become Black Widow, you need to do contractor work. You need to get paid to kill, right? right? So I have this girl, Valentina, that hires me. Well, I don't know if she introduced them, but it's like Valentina is her contractor, is her like informant, basically, is the person that gives her the jobs that gets them both paid. Right. Uh, allegedly, we don't know if Valentina is actually getting paid or she's getting hired. I, or- I mean, like we know from the end of Black Widow that um, ever, I um, not ever Ross, General Ross was like basically going through the wreckage of everything. And like, I feel like the government probably got involved with like what happened to the Mm -hmm. people after the red room. And so like, if, if um, Valentina's in charge of the CIA, maybe she's using her resources to sort of like find all these women and uh, use them to her advantage. 100%. It makes sense. Does Wilson Fisk, how does Wilson Fisk fit into this? If Wilson Fisk and Eleanor were working together, do you think, this was also a situation that Wilson Fisk wanted to get Ronan out of the way or Clint out of the way, maybe. Because I, I remember that in Hawkeye, the whole thing between Echo and Wilson Fisk was like, oh, you killed my dad. Mm. You were in charge of killing my dad. And maybe he wanted to tie up those loose ends and be like, well, Clint can't talk to her, so we got to kill him, too. Do you think Wilson Fisk had anything to do with it? I think that this was mainly just like an Eleanor Bishop thing. That, like, you know, mm-hmm. obviously involved Wilson Fisk because, like, you know, the, that whole Ronan situation. Um, but I feel like um, Val is going to be helping Wilson Fisk sort of rise back to the top of where oh. he used to be. Because it doesn't look like he's doing all that hot from Hawkeye. And no, he's in a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yeah. I think we're, we're, like, he's going through a bit of a power struggle within his own organization right now. Uh, maybe oh. with his own son. That'd be really cool and interesting. <gasps> oh. um, yeah, I feel like Val's going to be like, hey, let me scratch your belt. You scratch mine when you're in power again. I um, love this. Because Val, Val's I making moves. That. Val's going to be one of the biggest players, in the obviously, in the MCU outside of Kang. Um, she, she's literally going to reshape the world. She is playing. That's why I'm, okay, we'll get into that this part later. But I was like, that's why I'm like, I'm excited for Thunderbolt Ross to come back, but I'm also like, I thought Valentina was just going to take this place by storm anyways. So. Right. <laughs> whatever. What, whatever. Whatever. You guys whatever. come for me. Uh, our last question, which I want to yes. hand up to you, MT, because yes. you have a lot of information on this. What role will the Eternals and Celestials play going forward now? That's a, it's a really good question. And like, it, it, it's going to be a huge role. Like Eternals, was probably one of the, the the biggest title of Phase Four, the most influential title of Phase Four, uh, because it's it essentially told us how the universe came to be and what this, the the plan for the universe is. And with the Eternals being whisked away by um, Arishem to basically go through their memories to see if if humanity is worthy, that event in itself could possibly trigger. Um, a new host of the Celestials could possibly trigger an apocalyptic event where they come, we saw from Guardians 1, how they came and they destroyed that planet with um, the Power Stone. Essentially, that could potentially happen to humanity where mm. um, the Celestials are like, all right, you guys are causing too much trouble. We reset the experiment and we uh, we we go to see where humanity, uh, where um, the Earth ends up a couple million years from now. But like no, knowing what we know from Eternals, that the Celestials basically keep all the light in the universe running what happens if all the Celestials die? Like, because we know that, you know, Druig does not like the Celestials at all, and he's on his way to yeah. go see them. What if he finds a way to kill all the Celestials? I feel like that's what's going to be the major narrative going forward. Because if all the Celestials die, then darkness reigns in the, in the universe. You can't. I, I, that's why I would hope that Druig would learn, is like, if you kill all them, you're killing all these innocent lives. Um, exactly. Of people. That's interesting. Also, 
I hate to throw this wrench in. That we saw a celestial, correct, at, in Thor and Thor Love and Thunder at right. the meeting. So how important are they if they're just hanging out with Zeus? You think that they're, they're all mighty, they're all whatever, and then you see all of them kind of hanging out here, and it's like I thought you were all above everything. So it's like, how do, does that throw a wrench in it? I I think that you know I love seeing the celestials hanging out with the gods because like. I, I have always had this feeling that the gods and celestials basically have the same job. It's like we, we're supposed to manage yeah. the light and all the people of, of the of the universe. Like make sure that everyone stays alive and stays safe if for that purpose. And so, but like they got so used to their job and so and so like bored with it. They're just like, you know what? We're just chilling. Like people are they're just like peons and like we're just we're just like living the our lives of luxury and like they they worship us mm. and we get the power and it's great. And so it's like it's sort of like I don't know, sort of like a break room of like really lax rulers where it's just like, well, who cares? You know, we're just chilling, whatever. Because they all have the same job. So I feel like it makes sense for the Celestials and Eternals <laughs> to and relax. the Celestials and Gods They're to like, hang out together, I guess. I, I need know. to take a break. Uh, that and the fact that like, okay, so we know that after Tiamat was stopped, um, they, they their punishment so far that we know of is just taking the three that are on Earth and taking them away. So are they just going to ignore and allow Tiamat to just lay in the ground halfway up? That's that's the question. It's like, do they resurrect uh, Tiamat if they can um, and, and and sort of like re-trigger the emergence and, and make that happen? Um, that's actually a good question. Like, can Tiamat even be saved? Resurrect. Um, or is Tiamat like fully dead? Storyline wise, I think it's easier. And I think uh, just to make him like become an island. To make this become like an island in the middle of the ocean and just be like, yeah, this is the island that's now a dead kind of almost made celestial. Um, but it would be so great 10 years from now if Marvel did want to talk about the celestials being able to resurrect their own. Um, they have to. They have. Well, maybe not, because then we have the skull of nowhere just floating and they never resurrected him. Right. I mean, like, it'd be so dope if we got like Marvel zombies, but celestials. If they, oh, if they God. freaking resurrected <laughs> oh, Tiamat Jesus. in the What If Zombies episode, I would literally lose my shit. That would be bananas. Insane. That would that be would so be crazy. Insane. <laughs> that would be. Uh, what's a god? What's a god? What's a devil anymore when you have a zombie celestial right? running amok on Earth? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys, that is it. For our episode of Inside Marvel, we answered some of the questions that you guys have been asking yes. us over time. Thank you guys so much for your questions. Yeah, thank yeah, thank you guys for sending in your questions. I really appreciate it. This is the best. Uh, also, it's like some of them have hard, like, cemented answers from mm -hmm. just from studio opinion, but a lot of them are just theorizing until we get into Phase Five and figure out right. what they can do. A lot of these things sit on the back burner, and then they remember it later, and they're like, "Oh, we can address this now." Yeah. Uh, this will be fun to come back to. And I'm that is how I feel about White Vision. They were like, we're holding on to this. We're holding on to this for when we want to jump back into right. it. Will we see him in Agatha? I don't know. I just think he's going to be sitting there for a minute until they're like, yeah. Yeah. White Vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, White Vision. <laughs> you guys, don't forget to check out our merch at newrockstarsmerch.com. And if you're over 18, click the link in our bio, their bio. Click the link down below for our New Rockstars Discord server in the description and join the conversation. Follow me at Lulu underscore Clemens. Follow MT at Mastertainment. Subscribe mm. to Inside Marvel wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Gang, gang. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.